Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to take a look at viscosity and viscosity is another result of the intermolecular forces between molecules. For example, any fluid uh, will have some molecular forces between the molecules of the fluid. So when you try to flow a fluid through a pipe or through a channel or through a, a, like a small capillary tube or something like that, there'll be some resistance to that flow depending upon the amount of viscosity. And the viscosity depends upon the amount of the intermolecular forces. The greater the forces, the greater the viscosity. The less the forces, the less the viscosity. And you can even have viscosity for gases as well as fluids. So viscosity by definition, the fluid's resistance to flow. And typically, as the temperature of the fluid goes up, the viscosity of the fluid tends to go down. Temperature of the fluid goes down, the viscosity, the viscosity of the fluid tends to go up. The units of viscosity, it's newtons times seconds divided by meters squared, but if you can rearrange the units a little bit, you can actually write it as newtons times meters divided by square meters times meters divided by seconds. So it's basically force times distance divided by area times velocity. So where did all that come from? Well, the way that viscosity is determined, imagine that you have uh, some water sitting in a, in a big container. You put a, something on top of the container that floats, and you can pull it along. Let's say the area of that small piece that you're pulling has a cross-sectional area of A, and you're pulling it at a velocity V requiring a certain amount of force F. The greater the viscosity, the greater the force you're going to need in order to pull it at a certain velocity. And so what happens is that the layers of water right below the object that you're pulling will kind of get pulled along with that object because of the forces, the, ad the adhesion forces between the water and the object. But what happens then is that the velocity of the water below those layers, as you go further and further down to the layers, all the way down to the bottom, the velocity of that water will be less and less and less and less, and at the very bottom you'd assume that the velocity of the layers of the water along the bottom are zero because the adhesion forces between the water molecules there and the bottom of the container. So you see that the velocity of the water will be greater and greater as you go up and smaller and smaller as you go down caused by, these by the concept of viscosity, caused by the resistance to flow, and caused by those intermolecular forces. So if you write viscosity as the letter mu, the Greek letter mu, then the force required to pull is equal to the viscosity times the cross-section area times the velocity divided by the distance from where the object is to the bottom of the container. Makes a lot of sense because the greater the viscosity, the harder you have to pull. The larger the area of this object that you're pulling, the more you have to pull. The faster you're pulling, the more you have to pull. And then if there's a greater distance between the object on top and down below, you'll have a smaller gradient, a smaller change between the velocity at the top and the bottom, which the bigger y is, the smaller the force you will need. And that's how you then can figure out to find the viscosity. If you then rewrite this equation, put the y over here, put the a down there, put the v down there, you can write mu is equal to the force required times the depth of the container divided by the cross-sectional area of the object you're pulling, divided by the velocity. And that's how you determine the viscosity of a fluid. There's other ways you can push fluid through a small opening, see how much force that takes. There's various ways, but there's different ways in which you can test the viscosity, and that is definitely one of them. So that's the basics of viscosity.